Okay, well, uh, now we're about to look at Yannick Pontal's bike, but I couldn't feel under more pressure. We've got SRAM's top brass here, busy relaxing after some very busy days. Uh, but we have now got uh, Yannick Pontal's transition. I'll reveal the name of the bike in a minute. And it features, and I need to be really quiet talking about this, and maybe I'll turn my back. It's actually got the new Eagle powertrain on it. So, as I said, eagerly awaited. Now, the powertrain has got there's many parts of the system. It introduces Axis, Eagle. It's got, it's powered by Brose in terms of the motor, 95 newton meters, 680 watts peak power. Uh, the interesting thing, I can stop whispering now, is this bike has actually got two modes. It's got Rally and also Range. It's, it's a super minimalist setup. It's, you can see the front of house here. There's, you know, there's, it's as a mountain bike should be. Everything is controlled via the pods. So you've got um, the two modes in there. And you've also got a very cool new feature, which is auto shift and coast shift. So I've ridden this bike and what's really cool about it is that you can actually change when it changes gear. So you've got pluses and minuses on there. So if you're, if you're doing like mellow trails, you'll go in minus. If you're doing tough technical trails, you stick it into the plus mode. So it's, it's more sensitive to the change in cadence and, and the gear changing. Um, I'm feeling, as I said, I'm feeling massive pressure here. The guys by the sides here, they're probably watching every word I'm saying. All good so far? Yeah. You got the thumbs up. Right, okay, the bike. Folks, it's a transition repeater. Uh, 170 mil travel front. And I'm now gonna call in the main man, Craig Miller. Here he is. Hi Craig. Hi there. How are you getting on? Good thanks. Can can we have can you help some details please? Yeah. I'm gonna hit you with some geometry number questions. Is that alright? Yeah, go for it. Okay, let's have a look at head tube angle, seat tube angle, chain stay, and maybe even the wheelbase. Uh, well, head tube, we're on six, three and a half standard. Um, this size medium that he's been on all season. Uh, it's 455 reach, and we'd be normally running just standard headset cups. Um, but for this race, high speed bike park, we've put in a plus six mil offset. Um, kept the same angle, just to sort of get, get them over the front a bit more. Chain stay? Um, chain stay? Chain stay is 455. Seat tube angle? Not sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Craig, can you join us? Could you just join us over here a second, please? Um, coil shock is standard. Uh, he flex between the coil and the vivid. He's been really getting on quite well with the vivid elsewhere. Um, we've had a lot of rain the past couple of days. A lot of fresh tracks here that are really nice. So he's enjoying the extra traction in the coil. Yeah. And that's when you say vivid. That's the vivid air, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Uh, I'm interested in that this bike has actually got Minion DHR2 test pilot tires. What does that actually mean? Um, the Test pilots are slightly more, it's, it's like got an extra bit of protection there. Um, mainly for us, we're on the 2.5 for Yannick, give him a bit more volume. Um, he wants a bit extra traction and climbing. That's the main thing of the DHR2 for going uphill in the power stages. Mm -hmm. That's quite important here. Yeah. And, but he, what's, what's his second choice of tyre for uh, if, you know, if the conditions change up here on the hill? Um, so right now we're actually just in the first day of practice in Ligier. Um He's came in, we've been switching between the DHR2 in the rear and Shorty. Mm -hmm. um, on the front we're Askai and Shorty. What do you use, what do you use back home? Where is home by the way? Uh, I'm in Erlethen. In a Lethen, so you must be neighbours of Pagey. Poor you. Yeah, he's about three hundred metres away. <laughs> you deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, clueless. Uh, Pagey's actually challenged me to a power stage uh, challenge later. Anyway, going back to the bike wheel choice. Now this bike is twenty nine front, twenty seven point five in the rear. Um, zip motor wheels on there all the time. Yep, all the time. Um, so before I was working with Yannick, I was with uh, Lapierre Zip Collective for four years um, with Adrian. And Is this like your CV or something? Well, I moved on. I'm trying to get, I'm just making sure it's there. But the Moto's been working for a long time. And Sorry to be rude. That's fine. I was rude to you. <laughs> Turned up hungover eventually. <laughs> <laughs> Sram guy's laughing in the background. Craig, this looks interesting. This chain stay protection here. Is that your own doing? Yeah. Yeah, this is something I came up with a few years ago. Um, it's just a piece of foam tube inside with a bit of slapper uh, or the, the scotch tape over the top. Yeah. Um, it, it just gives the chain a little bit of cushioning without anything solid. Um, just quiets the noise down. What's interesting, Craig, is with the, with the new uh, Eagle powertrain, sometimes you can run a, a cable into the rear derailleur, but on this occasion, it's just the, it's just the battery, right? 
Yes, we've went just the battery. Um, figured it's not really any extra power drain, but I was like, all right, we're we want as much power as we can out of the motor, so it's like we can fit an extra battery there and save the main battery. So Yannick Pontal is French, uh, and he's, he's riding the size medium bike. Um, interesting, this is a really interesting fact. We've got 150 cranks on there? 150 cranks, yep. For the time being, you said earlier. Uh, we did some playing around. I mean, Yannick, Yannick is a, he's a test rider primarily, so he does a lot of changing setups and try and find what he's happy with, and he's settled on 150 for most of the season. What's the kind of range that, that he might go through during the year? We've tried everything, really. Um, I went 145 just for the, the feeling and up to one, one, 160s, 170s, definitely yeah. 170s. Way um, too long. Now, what's really interesting about this bike as well is, actually, I'm not going to reveal the results, but this bike in this trim it was actually one of the strongest contenders for the lightest bike in the pits. I'm not going to say what it is in case the video's not come out yet, but talking about weight, um, battery. Now we know that there's either a, can I whisper this, there's either a 630 or a 720 bar. What battery does it go for? It goes for the 630. <laughs> it's as, as light as we can make the bike and survive the loop. And this year the loops haven't been too demanding on power. So we really lighten up, especially here. You don't need the big battery. Your job must be considerably easier now that uh, that the racing is is just one. Is it one or two batteries are allowed during the day? Yeah, only one battery swap. Right. So we've got two batteries. It was a bit less less work than previous years. Now, I haven't got my glasses on, but it's been pointed out that there's actually more embargoed products on Yannick's bike, including what are we talking about here? Oh, we got some new brakes and a faster lower, like a new nice color, red one, and bigger brakes. Faster lower on the forks, you mean, on the Zeb fork? Yeah, Zeb fork, new color, and uh, new brakes. Brakes being? Better. <laughs> Tim, any comment? I, I can't comment. I've never ridden them, so I don't know. Now, for the second time in as many weeks, I'm going to say, uh, can you all say, leave a comment in the below to congratulate Tim Flukes on uh, 55 years of, uh, <laughs> of active uh, employment with SRAM, right? No, only with, with SRAM, only about 10, just over 10. Really? Come on. Yeah, but no, I started with RockShox in 95 and actually worked with RockShox from distributor level in 92. So say a big cheers to Tim. Uh, like I said, he's worked tirelessly uh, <laughs> fiddling with forks and brakes and stuff for all those years. Nice yeah, one. Yeah. Hey Tim, have a good time in cheers. Rock Dessert. I will. Back to the bike. Um, what else should we talk about, Craig? Um, I suppose the, the interesting one on this is that the, the transition wasn't designed to have a swappable battery. Um, it's a different different approach they went for with a much bigger battery which for racing we wanted a smaller lighter battery to swap so SRAM in transition did a fair amount of work in the background to help us develop a way we can swap it out nice and quick um, but it involves popping the motor out but we've got that down under five minutes now and back in. Whoa really wow crikey. Yeah. That's about it folks uh, pedals on here what pedals are they? Those are time. Time pedals uh, other fine details on the bike physique seat Handlebars, they're going to be these SRAM descent and handlebars, yep. ODI grips on here. Yep. Um, now this this mudguard, not available with the front part, but actually I'm, I've heard that the, the boxer comes with the front part of the mudguard, yep. maybe in a few years to come. What else have we got, Craig? That's it, isn't it? Yeah, I think most of the nails in the head. Um, time pedals. Time pedals, yep. We've got those. Um, wee bit of carbon and the nice wee spacers as detail. Mm -hmm. We got plenty of time. We can we can we can ponder all day. We got a reverb, axis reverb dropper. The cool thing about this is it's it is actually an Eagle powertrain. It's actually a system. Remember, um, and the the Brose motor is actually just one part of the hardware. So lots of people have been talking about oh the new SRAM motor, but it's actually like it is the whole thing. And what's interesting is the the level of detail which you can access via the new Axis app. So such things in there as your power, the motor power, the range modes, all that stuff. And so it's actually a level of information which you can look at post ride as well as during the ride. So there you go, folks. Yannick Pontal's, uh, I've been pointed again. 
Here we go. Were you involved in the in the pile train? Yeah, I was part of it. So yeah. So the system was developed in Schweinfurt in Germany. Yeah. You seem very quiet and modest about this. I've ridden it. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. It is really, really nice and really innovating. I think. Yeah. Do you know what I think? And SRAM are going to hate me for this. Is I actually think that Eagle transmission works better with auto shift than it does manually. What are you going to say about that? I would say it works with both great, but of course uh, you. <laughs> <laughs> we we especially develop it for the e-bike, so yeah, it works really great. Honestly, top job. Thanks so much, guys. Thanks for showing us or letting us have a look around the bike. Let you get back to your beers and. Um, Tim, see you in the Rock Desert. Yeah, don't take my glasses. Oh, your glasses, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, folks, let's know. Thanks to Craig Miller. Uh, folks, let me know your thoughts on the new transition repeater. Hopefully, Lars Sternberg, who's the man behind this bike in terms of selling it, might be able to leave a comment down below on the availability dates. See you later.